Hey guys, welcome to this Metrics video over Freud and psychoanalysis. Sigmund Freud was born May 6, 1856 in Moravia. Freud performed very well in school as a child and at age 17 went off to medical school at the University of Vienna. Eight years later, he received his medical degree, then going on to spend several years trying to reduce personality to neurology, which he later stopped trying. After completing his residency, he moved back to Vienna and married one of his patients, Martha Bernays. He then began a practice in neuropsychiatry. Freud wrote books that brought him fame and estrangement from the medical community. He surrounded himself with people who thought like him and rejected anyone who didn't totally agree with him. The ones who he rejected ended up going on to write competing theories. Freud went on to write many of his own theories in psychoanalysis. He didn't actually invent the idea of conscious versus unconscious, but he did, however, make it popular. Freud believed there were three parts of the conscious. The conscious mind, the pre-conscious mind, and the unconscious mind. He defined the conscious mind as being anything that you are aware of at any particular moment. Your present perceptions, memories, thoughts, fantasies, feelings, etc. The pre-conscious mind is anything that can be made conscious. You may not be presently thinking about it, but you can easily recall it to mind. The part he spent the most time on was the unconscious mind, which includes anything that is not easily available to our awareness. This includes anything that he believed originate in the unconscious, like drive and instincts, and things that we ourselves put there, like any emotions or memories tied to a traumatic event. Psychoanalytic theory postulates that humans have instincts to satisfy their needs for food, shelter, and warmth. Satisfaction of these instincts produces pleasure and leads to the development of sexual drives. The two basic drives are sex and aggression, or life and death. Freud referred to the nervous system as id. The id works in keeping with the pleasure principle, which can be understood as a demand to take care of needs immediately. However, you can never satisfy the id. Once you have satisfied it, the demands just keep coming and stronger and stronger until some of the id becomes an ego in the first year of a child's life. The ego relates the body to reality by engaging its consciousness and it begins searching for things to satisfy the wishes the id creates. The ego, unlike the id, introduces us to reality. It tells us to satisfy a need whenever you find an appropriate object. However, because the ego will inevitably struggle to keep the id happy due to obstacles of the world, the superego records things to avoid and different strategies to take. There are two different aspects to the superego, the conscious and the ego ideal. The conscience, in this sense, internalizes punishments and warnings. The ego ideal derives from the rewards and positive models presented to the child. Freud also believed that at different times in our lives, different parts of our skin give us greatest pleasure. Freud divided human development into five stages. One, oral, which is birth to 18 months. Two, anal, which is two to three years. Three, phallic, which is three to five years. Four, latency, at six years to puberty. Five, genital, puberty to adulthood. Incomplete development at any stage he called fixation. The stages are based on his belief that the child focuses on different areas of the body in each stage. These areas are known as erogenous zones and include the mouth, anus, and genitals. Psychological defenses that help a person control or prevent undesirable or inappropriate emotions or behaviors include denial, repression, suppression, projection, displacement, rationalization, reaction formation, regression, and sublimation. Then, of course, there's the infamous Oedipal crisis. Here's what he meant. The first love object for everyone is their mother. We want her attention, we want her affection, we want her touch, we want all of her in a broadly sexual way. A young male has to fight for her attention with his father, so dad becomes the enemy. This stage occurs when a boy begins to recognize body parts, so naturally the boy begins to wonder why a girl doesn't have a penis which gives him castration anxiety because he thinks the father might cut off his penis too. The boy realizes that his father is superior and switches his affection to women rather than his mother. He then identifies with his father and strives to be a man like his dad. 
girls also start off in life being in love with their mothers as well. So how then do girls eventually become attracted to men? Freud takes care of this with the idea of penis envy. The girl also notices the anatomical differences and she feels inferior. She would also like to have a penis and all the superiority that comes with it. So she looks for a substitute, a baby, which requires a father. So the young girl begins the search for a dad. However, since dad is off the market, she sets her sights on other boys. Dr. C. George Beret at Shippensburg University says that Freud felt that the lack of this great fear accounts for the fact, as he saw it, that women were both less firmly heterosexual than men and somewhat less morally inclined. Freud had many other psychoanalytical theories, most of which were disagreed with. Thanks for watching this video on Freud and psychoanalysis. I hope it was helpful. Be sure to subscribe to our channel right here for more of our videos. See you next time.